Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to some more F1 Manager 2024 and another part of the Lotus Road to Glory career mode. Today we take on the Spanish Grand Prix following the jubilation of last episode and securing our first point with the team. Thank you very much for the support on the series so far. We do have um, a brand new patch to dig into today. Um, earlier this week, it obviously came out. I've been away for the last few days, so what you've been watching are pre-recorded um, videos. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for your support on the series so far. Do give it a big thumbs up if you are enjoying and without further ado let's get ourselves immersed into the action and uh yeah uh, we do need to sort out the look of our car because we are um moving away from the special livery now somebody uh, was saying can you uh, change the the sort of logos on your team um and and well not not your driver suits, but the, the team suits. And no, you can't. Uh, certainly not anything that I've found. Um, but some people have been a little bit upset by the uh, the colour of the gold that we've gone for for the, the team branding. Now, uh, s somebody in particular was saying, oh, I've given you the, uh, the RGB code. Now, this isn't an RGB code. This is hue, saturation and, and brightness. Um, I will give you code a go. But uh, it, it won't it won't work the way that uh, you think. I, I don't think so anyway. Um, but we are going to come up with a, a, an updated delivery um, for our um, for our car. Um, but certainly in terms of the the drivers, they are going to remain how they are at the moment. Um, I do quite like the. The, the team kit so yes i'm gonna go ahead and sort out the uh, the car and then i'll see you guys in a second okay so there you go then um there is our new uh colors i have made it a slightly darker gold but um yeah it is very very difficult to to try and um and get it as as dark as possible really um yeah if we go into the the, the car livery you can see um, that's ab about as dark as you can get that um, gold color, you know, before it starts looking brown, in my opinion. Um, I mean, we, you know, we can go for for that, um, but yeah, it, it it does just start to to look uh, brown at that point, I think. But uh, you know, maybe we can just about get away with that. Um, but do let me know, you know, do you like the, the, the black and gold? I, I certainly do. I think it looks, uh, it looks really nice on the car with a glossy black there, uh, to make it nice and, uh, nice and shiny. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we can start uh, scoring some points with uh, that car. Um, and obviously we've stuck with the, the sort of green and gold um, driver outfit. I think that does look rather nice. Uh, in terms of our car parts development, that's all looking good at the moment. Um, obviously we've got that point now and that could really help us as we head uh, towards the uh the last parts of the season uh looking at our cost cap we have got 40 million of that remaining um and we are expecting to be fine on that front uh, for the rest of the season i think uh we will just have to see how it goes moving forward now in terms of our um affiliates we should be able to sign some new drivers now which is fantastic to see uh, so we are going to keep the age group to uh, 16 to 21. Um, Dennis Hauger is definitely somebody that we could get in as our um, affiliate driver. So we probably want to get him in immediately. Um just sat down a little bit give him a an initial offer there and we can offer it for 28 days and he should come back to us at some point with that he doesn't seem too fussed about joining us unfortunately uh, Paul Aaron is definitely somebody we would like to get in as well um, we can see he wants 
a little bit more money. Uh, and we'll give him 14 days to get back to us. Again, you know, maybe the affiliate for one season, that, that seems to be a little bit better. So we'll offer him that. And you never know, we might get ourselves in a, a, um, a, a driver in pretty quickly, which would be rather nice. So we have got a, a facility upgrade incoming. The tour centre has been upgraded. So let's have a, a little look at that. Uh, that increases our team marketability up. And yeah, let's get the uh, memorabilia room upgraded as well, just so that we can have as good a mentality as possible. Investing in Yokosho Yoshida, I don't think there's really any point in that. Because they're pretty awful anyway. So I don't think we need to worry about that. Now, can we renew the contract of Hulkenberg yet? Not, not, not just yet. What about Schumacher? No. Yeah, a little bit annoying. Okay, yeah, let's move on. Right. Let's see what other uh, manufacturing we could do with doing. So we've got four chassis. So that's good. Six front wings, four rear wings three side pods I think we've got some more side pods on the way um, underfloor is probably somewhere that we need to, to work on so let's get a couple of underfloors in the bank and suspension I think we're okay with as well so let's uh, keep pushing on and yeah I am excited for this, uh, this weekend got some side pods to come June staff survey. Most of them are unhappy, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but there's our sponsor plan done. That should get us a decent amount of money in the bag. Let's have a look at our next sponsor plan. Rest day appearance. Let's go for that. And maybe a race engineer interview. Have we got a scout one? I don't think so. That's fine. That'll do. And that, that should get us over the target nice and easily. What was the next thing we wanted to do? We wanted to have a little look at the suspension. Maybe get one more of those made sooner rather than later. Yeah, all of this is looking fine. And uh, we won't get penalties now, which is, is good. That's the main thing that we're worried about at this stage. Now that has major damage, it has got a lot of um, life left in it, but it looks like we are going to have to buy a new ERS at some point, which is a shame, it is a shame. Alright, let's continue on. Designs are complete for the underfloor and the chassis. Um, we can't get them made just yet. Have a little look. Yeah, maybe we'll just make one of those underfloors because uh, that's going to be out of date very, very soon anyway. But we can start designing a new part. So we've got a new underfloor in there. Let's have a little look. Where could we improve? So we've got three chassis, three underfloors. Um, and we are researching the front wing for next season. So maybe we could um, 
do a bit of research. We don't need to do that just yet because the, the new ATR window is open in three days. So we'll set ourselves some race targets. Um, let's go for 15th with Hulkenberg. And 17th with Schumacher. A little bit more cautious than last time. I am a bit nervous Thank about you this for one. Joining us for the Spanish Grand Prix here in Barcelona. The first Grand Prix held here was won by Nigel Mansell after a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with Ayrton Senna. But who will follow in his footsteps this weekend? Red Bull have outscored their rivals to be at the top of the constructors' table right now. And as the final round begins, what a season it's been. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Formula One. Okay, brilliant. Right, I'll get on with a practice and I'll see you guys for qualifying. There's tension in the air today, so it must be time for qualifying. Drivers need to get into Q3 if they want to make the top half of the grid. With only 10 slots available, it's a fight nobody wants to lose. There, of course, we've got Nico Hülkenberg. How do you think he's faring heading into qualifying? You can tell that we've been watching a driver with real confidence here. And it makes a difference, I can tell you, from my own experience. What does today have in store? Only time will tell. Okay, here we are for qualifying then. Um, and uh, I have been switching around the engine parts today because they have fixed the, the glitch where you got the... 10 place grid penalty um, if you basically changed any engine parts it seemed to be a bit temperamental when that actually happened um, Mick Schumacher's ERS is, is not good um, I'm kind of tempted to stick with it though um, and just see does it have a big impact on performance this weekend it may well uh, you know end up that uh, we we struggle um, you know because of that but uh, I'm pretty confident that we can we can pull this off uh, regardless uh, we are going to go for this sort of setup for Mick Schumacher to see if he can get through to Q2 and there is uh, Nico Hulkenberg's uh, set up and that's uh, looking very very strong indeed so we're going to just um, adjust it slightly so that we're in a, a good position Get ready for the or real as good a position as possible with our setup. So there you go then. Uh, we'll send out Mick Schumacher first. And as you can see, it, it it's not great, the, the sort of brown we've or gold we've gone for. It does look more brown when you're out there on the track. Um, I don't know. I'm in two minds about it. You guys uh, will need to let me know down in the comments how do you feel about it right Nico Hulkenberg going out there as well and we're splitting them up on track giving them their own clear air to drive into and then let's uh, ride on board with Mick Schumacher he's going to be setting the first times out there so it's a 22.8 first sector we'll keep an eye on Nico Hulkenberg's times throughout the lap Make sure you currently at the moment looking like he's going along quite well. 22.8 is, is decent, I think. Let's see how Hulkenberg does it. He comes through now. 22.2, so actually a long way off there, Schumacher. And that could be down to the ERS, that. Six tenths down. 30.2 middle sector yeah, could well be down to that ERS I did just want to see what impact would it have and well, it will, might appear that could be a very bad impact so 30.2 middle sector plays a 29.5 from Hulkenberg so Hulkenberg is going to be massively quicker he comes over the line and he's actually quicker than uh, Sergio Perez on that first flying lap. Now, can will this will we be able to? 
change? Well, no, we can't. We could change it between Q1 and Q2, though. But yeah, I think Hulkenberg's okay. Now, how's this setup? Did his setup improve? It did. 96%. That's pretty good. Where Hulkenberg's? 100%! Hey! First 100% setup of the year. That's what we like to see. And maybe that's uh, also contributed to how Hulkenberg has, has got on there. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking let's send out Schumacher later on, see if we can give him a bit of a tow as well. But to be fair, both cars currently through to Q2. Hulkenberg up in sixth at the moment. I think he's put in a particularly good lap out there. Schumacher on the cusp. Do want to keep an eye out on when certain cars go out. There goes Fittipaldi. McLaren of uh, Norris, I think. Right, the RB. That's probably a good one to follow. So Schumacher's going to go out there on some fresh boots. see if we can do any better. I don't think Hulkenberg actually needs to go out there again, so he's not going to. But Mick is out there on some fresh tyres. How did he do in that first sector? It wasn't great. Not great in the middle sector either. From Mick Schumacher. It doesn't look like he's going to improve at all here. Even a couple of tenths would, would help. As he comes over the line, is it an improvement? No, it's not. So I think Mick Schumacher could be out here. Magnussen is the one to watch. Can Magnussen get himself into that top 16? Here comes Kevin Magnussen. Schumacher's all team in. Magnussen knocks him out of qualifying. He's up to 14th. And uh, yeah, that's a big uh, disappointment for us. Ocon goes above him as well. But Nico Hulkenberg, positive. He is through. Schumacher is out. We will have to change that ARS going into tomorrow because it has had a big impact on him. In the end, he was uh, 1.7 seconds down on Nico Hulkenberg. And Hulkenberg a lot closer at the top 10 and, and could well find himself getting through here. That's uh, very exciting times for Nico. Right, let's get ourselves into Q2 then. And see if Nico can continue okay, should be green. his good form from Q1. And of course, Canada as well. Let's just have a little look at his time. So 22 8. That sort of matches what uh, Schumacher did the, the first time around. 29 6 middle sector. Much better middle sector from Nico but he's coming around now and I don't think this is going to be as good as his time in the last session a 114.5 um, yeah it'll be interesting to see that how that compares to, to Q1 I don't think we can see Q1 anywhere on there but um, we'll see we'll see how he gets I think it was a 113.5 he did in Q1 Yeah. I don't think scrub tyres are, are very good anymore, but uh, we might as well send him out, give him another run, see if he can improve his time at all. Because he is quicker than a few of the guys out there. Let's see if he... Yes, he has improved his first sector by about a tenth or so, and it improves his middle sector. It's all going to be down to his final sector. Is it going to be an improvement? It is. Three improved sectors. Gives him an extra tenth of comfort. He is currently 12th. 
Well, let's get him in. Let's get him onto another set of brand new, fresh, soft tyres. We'll see when to send him out. Try and send him out right towards the end here. And there he goes, out on his way. And we'll ride on board with him. He's currently in 12th place. Now, you know Norris is going to be better than that. Same for Fernando Alonso as well. So, you know, we're a long way off Q3 times. But I think well, it's worth having a go. Let's see how we get on in Sector 1. Yeah, it's a 22-0 for Hulkenberg. Fastest of anybody. 22-0. That is 7 tenths quicker than what he managed before. If he can keep this pace up, he will get himself into the top three. 29-5. Tenth quicker for Nico Hulkenberg in that middle sector. This could well end up being enough to get through. That Red Bull's in the way, though. He's coming round now. Nico Hulkenberg, it's going to be in the 13s. What a lap that was. And he's up to seventh. Oh, -ho! where did that come from? From Nico Hulkenberg. That was ridiculous. And he was held up in that final sector as well. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Where did he get that from? Now, Lewis Hamilton still to cross over the line. He's uh, going well in the middle sector. Um, but he's down on those two times, or the time needed to get through. Will Hamilton go quicker than Daniel Ricciardo? He's coming round now. Can Hamilton get into the top ten? No, he can't. And that is that. Nico Hulkenberg is through into the top ten. Where did that pace come from? That was ridiculous. He found three tenths on his Q1 time there. Wow. That is somebody at one with the car. Now, we um, have one set of new soft tyres. We're going to go out there on the scrubs. Okay, green first light, of all. Green light. And we'll see what we can do here. Well, that's actually a pretty decent time, that. A 1.13.3's matched it on those tyres. And this track must just be getting better and better, and his confidence must be getting higher and higher. He's currently quicker than Sergio Perez. That is unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm just in a bit of shock here at how quick Nico Hulkenberg is at this moment in time. So we're currently P7 before the final run. Gonna send him out in some clear air here. And the clerk will make his way past. I don't think Perez will reach him though. So let's hop on board with Nico Hulkenberg. He's got brand new soft tyres. What's the interval currently? Charge. Oh, sure. The clerk has gone third. Can we? Well, we're a tenth behind Lance Stroll. So this could be. A bit of a chance here to qualify P6, and that is, that would be unbelievable for Nico Hulkenberg. So let's uh, ride on board with him as he's flying through this first sector. Can he match what he did in Q2 through this first sector? He's coming through now. No, not quite. It's just about on his pace from before, so it's all going to be about this middle sector now then can that ferrari get out of the way please yes it does so no impeding there little bit of impeding from the williams in that instance mm, and it is not a very good middle sector so it's not quite gonna work out for us as we fly around the final corner here we are going to take manual control because we can have another go at this. As we come up to the line, 
it's no improvement, but we might as well keep our foot to the floor. Cancel the car calling, because the checkered flag is waved here. Let's see what he can manage in this first sector. The, the tyres aren't going to be ideal. But coming round now... How's that? Uh, 227, yeah, just not... Not the same, is it? Yeah. yeah we'll come in. We'll come in. There was no point in continuing that. He does come round into the pit lane. Uh, but it is going to be a P9 finish unless Ricardo out-qualifies him, which he didn't. And, well, we've got a chance. A chance out there, at the very least to maybe get back-to-back -back points. That is huge for our season. Where on earth has this pace come from? The stage is set here in Barcelona. 66 laps around a track that the drivers know inside and out. Barcelona is a circuit with plenty of history under its belt. It was here, after all, that multiple world champion Max Verstappen secured his very first F1 victory back in 2016. Long straights and medium speed turns dominate here, but there's something else to watch out for at Barcelona. The air currents are strong and unpredictable, and they'll be giving aerodynamic components a real run for their money this weekend. The time has almost come for our drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Race day has arrived. Okay, we are ready to rock and roll then. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg looking like he's going to go on to a two-stop strategy. Um, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, probably just want to... Yeah, that looks okay. So what's that? A 123.54. Where's Mick Schumacher on a three-stopper? Does he have enough soft tyres for that? He does, actually. Um, we obviously need to change that. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, though, that that's not going to be the best thing to do. Those tyres are just going to die, aren't they? What if we were to be less aggressive? Yeah, it's it's a really tough decision, isn't it? Of um, of how to to go about it. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the hards are probably the ones to be on at some point in the race, aren't they? Um, yeah, I mean, how can we, how can we eke out the strategy? It, it's just not going to work for... Nico Hulkenberg's got two medium sets, and that, that's what's helping him out here. I think it is going to have to be the three-stopper. I think that's ultimately going to be the, the quickest way to do it. There does seem to be a slightly quicker way there. But no. No, it, 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 it's going to be this, I think. Maybe, just maybe make that middle stint on the the mediums a little bit softer on the tires and you'll you'll make it through so that's what we're going to go for with uh, Mick Schumacher so that's not ideal um and we'll try and you know be a bit more cautious at the start now Nico Hulkenberg yeah we'll uh, 
I'll give him the the normal option. But let's see how we get on in this race. It is going to be a real a real indicator back, of where everyone. our pace was at. The was that just a fluke? Are now being made as we head into the race. There's a lot of talk about that man, Nico Hulkenberg. They've done well to secure a P9 start, and they'll be keen to convert that into some points. Right, let's get to it then. One of the oldest races on the Formula One calendar. This is the Spanish Grand Prix. Here we go then. Lights, lights out. out. And away away we, we go, go, Max Verstappen. Off to a good start. Ahead of uh, Oscar Piastri there in second, although Charles Leclerc is having a look as well. And as we hurl towards turn one, Hulkenberg up to seventh. What a start for him on those medium tyres. Right. Can Hulkenberg get himself set up here Let's for some good go. points now with uh schumacher we are going to have to be aggressive to on the overtakes and they go up to 20th already he did start at 18 so he has lost a, a couple of places there actually as uh, schumacher has overtaken joe guan yu now how quickly can nico hulkenberg Oh, how long can he stay with this leading group? I'm not sure he can stay with him very long as DRS gets enabled. And here comes uh, Lewis Hamilton already down the inside of Nico there. Obviously, Lewis on this soft tyre, so there's lots of different tyre strategies out there. And I think Hulkenberg, if he can stay with Lewis Hamilton, that could be a good place to be in this race now then there goes Schumacher around the outside of uh, Pierre Gasly up into P19 now let's get him back on to neutral and here we go then with Nico Hulkenberg he's going to have DRS on Lewis Hamilton and he's going to make that move tries to stay down the inside but uh, going to just keep him Oh, safety car. Oh, it's Schumacher. It's Schumacher. Well, well, well. Um, we are going to have to come into the pits now. And uh, put on... The hard tyres, really. But I think he might be out anyway. Let's have a little look. So it was Schumacher. And I think he's just locked up here. Big lock up into the back of the Sauber. And clearly then. I don't know, is Schumacher able to continue? No, he's out. Schumacher is out of the Grand Prix. Um as is Valtteri Bottas. Copy. And then Hulkenberg. Okay, back off. Couple. When is he due to come in? He's due to come in lap 22. I think it's not worth coming into the pits just yet. But the leaders might decide on that. Time penalty for Schumacher. That'll turn into a grid penalty for the next race. Piastri is in. Piastri is in, as is Lewis Hamilton. Interesting. But we are just going to try and look after our tyres, stick to our strategy here. But yeah, what a shame that uh, Schumacher is out of the Spanish Grand Prix. But it does mean that we can focus all our attention on maximising this result. And, you know, ultimately trying to gain some more points. Just get ready for the safety car restart. Copy. And put him on okay, high perfect. here. Let's get back up to pace. And can he get himself past Lance Stroll? Green flag, and we are underway once again here in the Spanish Grand Prix. 
And straight away, George Russell will be trying to put pressure on Nico Hulkenberg here. And it's looking like he's defending decently there. But he can't. He can't stay there. Now Zhou Guan Yu has dropped to the rear. What's happening to Hulkenberg here? Maybe we need to put that into neutral now. Zhou Guan Yu had a spin. And now Hulkenberg down to 10th all of a sudden. Where are these guys coming from? Not good. Not a good restart for Hulkenberg. And he has gained a second on Albon. At the very least, it does give him a bit of a gap. And, and 10th place would be pretty good for us today. For some reason, tyres just not come into him. Will he have DRS here? No, he won't. So now we just have to sort of sit and hope. In 10th place here, Kevin Magnussen, mechanical fault out there. And Piastri will be flying back through the field. He is somebody that has got a lot of pace. But Hulkenberg, you know, not, not too far behind here. I think maybe deploy a little bit now that the, the AI will have burned through their ERS supply. Give it a little bit of a push. And see what we can do here. No, not working. Now Oscar Piastri. Is going to be next to pass Nico Hulkenberg. And you'd expect him to, to get past fairly easily here. So I'm going to want to really defend here. Just tell him to focus on his line, focus on his race. And there goes Nico, uh, Oscar Piastri through. Has Fernando Alonso pitted as well? Yes, he has. So, again, he's going to be another one that, that catches and passes Nico Hulkenberg here. And really, it's the, the RBs that we need to, to keep an eye on in this race. Okay, we're out of the RS. The RS empty now. Let's zoom it through. So we've got an excellent gap to Alex Albon. That's pretty important for our race. And for the championship, because we do not want Albon getting in that final points paying position. Lap 22 is when Nico Hulkenberg will be coming into the pits. Not too far behind Daniel Ricciardo now. How's his tyres doing? Yeah, the, the, the front runners, they're going to start struggling, but... You know, our tyres aren't fantastic here. There's Albon. Albon's come in. He's put on a new set of mediums. Joe's had another lock up there. Up in. He's quite far down the order, isn't he? So quick look at tyres. Like a couple laps or sooner than that? Yeah, Hulkenberg's pit window is now open. Let's just check on his pace. His pace is pretty comparable to the guys he's racing including Alex Albon 
interestingly enough. So, Hulkenberg is going to come into the pits at the end of this lap. He's going to be putting on another set of soft tyres. So, here we go. Hulkenberg into the pits and hopefully we can have a good pit stop here. Keep us in contention. I think we should come out in front of Alex Albon here. Yeah, that's decent. 2.7. We'll certainly settle for that. And he is away. He's out just behind Kevin Magnussen. But seems to be well ahead of Alex Albon, who was our main rival, really. So, time to zoom forward again. We should catch uh, Kevin Magnussen quite easily here. And let's just have a little look at uh, tyres. So, we should get a, a decent undercut on Ricardo, Hamilton, Russell, Sunore, who have just come into the pit. So, they're covering us off here. See, we're putting in personal bests out there. And there we go, flying past Kevin Magnuson. And look how much time we've made up. And there is George Russell. And we, well, tried to go around the outside there. Decided against it in the end. Russell back out on brand new hard tyres but that is a huge undercut while Russell is trying to get used to these hard tyres this is a chance for Hulkenberg now with DRS this could be a bit of a chance here for Hulkenberg and he's going to go around the outside turns into the inside line of turn one beautifully done and Hulkenberg is through for now we might as well try and push try and get more than a second ahead this might not be easy to do yeah, Sergeant has a mechanical fault, unfortunately, for him. Now, Ricardo is in the pit lane. He's leaving it now. Can Hulkenberg get past him? It looks like it's going to be very tight. Doesn't manage it, though. And Ricardo back out there on new medium tyres. So, that is pretty huge. Needed to, to get past him there and then if we were to have any real chance of being ahead of Daniel Ricciardo, Lewis Hamilton in the pit lane now. So we are going to be well ahead of him. And there is Hulkenberg having a look and wow, makes it through. What a move for Nico Hulkenberg on Daniel Ricciardo. But Ricciardo is going to try and get straight back through. Does manage that. So it is uh, a decent battle between these two and nice of uh, Zhou Guan Yu to hold up George Russell just a little bit there yeah, looking at the tyres obviously we're going to be going to hard tyres after this so there's still a long long way to go in this race there goes Hulkenberg back past Daniel Ricciardo And we know Ricardo's going to get back past Hulkenberg. But it's about staying with him. Trying to make sure that we're within DRS, but that's not happened there. So now Ricardo looks uh, secure with that 10th place. Now then, obviously mechanical faults can play and probably will play a huge part in this race. 
When is Hulkenberg's planned pit stop? 42. Lap 42 of this Grand Prix. We're expecting Russell to pass Hulkenberg fairly shortly. Just, you know, he's in the better car in that Mercedes. But it's another race that we are massively ahead of the other mid midfield runners of the likes of Albon, Magnussen, Fittipaldi, Sargent, the two Alpines. I've got a yellow flag out there, and that was another Zhou spin. That's uh, pretty unbelievable, isn't it, to be honest? How many not gone right spins he's had. Albon's just had a, a poor pit stop as well. Now, Hulkenberg's just dropped behind George Russell. I think that could help us in the long run. If we can stick to about a second behind Russell here, that means we're going to go at, at his pace and hopefully start to close in a little bit on Daniel Ricciardo. But there we go. Oh, lots of crashes. We are through on, Hulkenberg, on uh, Russell. Let's have a little look at that and then we will look at what has happened. with the crash out there let's see now it looks like yes it is alex albon's involved in that yeah it's alex albon right, so this was the fourth corner so he's Not with wiggle room here but i say oh and he's and the uh, off the track the I, th I think he's okay i don't think much happened there to be honest but it would have been quite nice for a safety car to come there just as we've uh, entered our pit window. Now then. I think let's attack with Hulkenberg. We have got yellow flags out there again. And Shogun Yu running wide again. And those tyres aren't going to be great, are they? Lap are we coming in? We're coming in lap 43. So it's going to be this lap. Putting on the hard tyres. Until the end of this race. That's right on board with Hulkenberg as he takes the last out of these tyres. I think Kevin Magnussen is going to be retiring from this race very, very soon. So that's another rival out of it. Here we go then. Nico Hulkenberg into the pit lane. Really important that we have a good stop here. This is huge. So here he comes rolling into the pit box. Decent, 2.8. That's okay. We are away, we need to be out ahead of Magnussen, ideally. And we are well ahead. So 13th place for Nico Hulkenberg. Your P13. And possibly a bit of a ahead chance of you, here. You have to just be aggressive on fresh, sticky new tyres. Get them up to temp. Car behind his bag. And just see where we go with it. Copy. A bit more lift and coast, please. Copy. So we are going to be lapped here. So step and set uh, fastest lap of the race. Yeah, what temperature range are the, the tyres good in? Oh, looks like they are up to temp now, which is good. Let's have a little look at our lap times. Mm, pretty decent. Now Hamilton has gone out there on medium tyres, so he's going to be a little bit quicker than... Nico initially. So 
That's our 119.6. That's a very good lap time from Hulkenberg. I think this is going to give us a great chance of a pretty big undercut on Russell. Yeah, look at that. 1.7 seconds quicker. So this is good. Okay, so lap 48 of 66. 19.2, players are 1.19.2 from Russell as well. Sunoda right behind him at the same time here. Russell's tyres, they're, they're awful. He's coming into the pit lane now. So this, this is huge. Where are we going to come out compared to Russell? We've come out well ahead. Now Sainz is going to pass us. Norris is going to pass us as well. Need to get out of the way of them and quickly here. And we did... Luckily, got three second gap over Lewis Hamilton. And Russell is right behind Lewis Hamilton as well. Russell's on soft tyres. 15 laps to go here. But the two Mercedes cars battling it out. Russell through. Russell's going to be past us very, very quickly here. And this P11 looks like it's going to go the way of Mercedes. We are a long way behind Daniel Ricciardo anyway, so it really it doesn't matter on uh, that aspect. But here comes Russell. He's going to pass straight away. I think Hamilton's going to get us as well here. Yeah, a bit of a shame there. But 13th place, it should be for us, at the very least. And, you know, we've lapped all the way up to, well, 14th, so you know, there's no real hope of us, uh, or real danger of us losing uh, that place. Hamilton through now, took advantage of us having to let through Oscar Piastri. Now, how are Hamilton's tyres? They are in a worse state than ours. And we can stay with Hamilton here, so it's worth just sitting tight for the next 10 laps. Let's uh, top up our ERS so that we can have a real go on the last couple of circuits of this Barcelona track. We need to save some fuel because we're not going to finish. Yeah, we go don't need to worry about fuel because we are lapped down. But yeah, we are now struggling compared to Lewis Hamilton. Let's have a little look at that. 3.4 seconds is that gap. Hamilton has, has done it pretty much, hasn't he? But it's looking like Max Verstappen is going to be the victor again here. Yeah, I don't think we can close in on Lewis at all here. Russell's tyres are shot as well. What about uh, Ricardo's? I mean... You know, punctures could come into it. It really could. Look at look at some of those tyres. But they're not going to go below 30%. So final lap of this race. Mode push. Good. Chance for Nico Hulkenberg to push it as hard Good. as he can. Out there. Let's see what he can do. Are we going to see any personal bests from him? 
in this final lap of the race doesn't look like a 23 8 in that first sector 92 seconds Max ahead Verstappen of Alex Albon that is crazy isn't it no ERS left well it is a personal best in that second sector unbelievably and we are closing in on Lewis but we're not going to make it we come round the final corner now and we're going to finish in 13th place across the line that's pretty good checkered flag we'll settle for that you know it was very very good qualifying we knew great managing that it was going to be so tough in the race, especially because we had no soft the, uh, tires in there. Thank you. Over and out. But, um, yeah, shame to, to not see what Mick Schumacher had in the tank today. He could have uh, potentially helped out Hulkenberg. You know, could have been just behind him on the track. 14th place would have been pretty decent for, for um, Mick Schumacher. I think that's uh, where our pace is at at the moment but uh, another good midfield result and we'll be happy with that there's nico hulkenberg and with a 13th place finish that sadly means there's no points to be claimed well max verstappen can add yet another podium to his already impressive record taking their eighth win of the season there's just no stopping them And by the looks of things here in Barcelona, the party's only just beginning. Oh, very good for Max Verstappen. Eight victories this year for him. He is absolutely dominating the Drivers' Championship in this series. There's not a lot that can be done. Piastri and Leclerc, not too far behind. At the end of that? It was a strangely mixed weekend for them. We saw one driver put in a strong performance, but it was a different story for the other. Definitely positives there, though. And with that, our time in Barcelona is done. Next time, the teams will be forging ahead at full throttle through the Styrian Forest. The Austrian Grand Prix is right around the corner. Well, looking forward to Austria next time out. Um, although Mick Schumacher will probably require... A whole new engine, I would imagine, after that crash. But but we'll see. Um, you know, it might not be the case. Uh, Constructors were still seventh, you know, ahead of Williams, Haas, Sauber, Alpine. That's pretty amazing. And, uh, yeah, we just need to try and improve our pit stops, get going in that championship, um, and we can be pretty happy. $404,000 made this weekend. So, um, underfloor has been manufactured. Uh, there's our ATR window uh, opening, which is good to see. Uh, Paul Aaron has accepted a contract offer. So we've got our first driver in the affiliate system, which is really nice. We now have... Uh, an affiliate driver in the form of Paul Aaron. Um, he will be joining us next season, I believe. Um, just double checking that. I think that's fine. Let's just maybe go forward one day. That's the team hubs that have been upgraded. Is he is he joining us next season? It's probably the quickest way to find him, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, there you go. Contract start on first of Jan, twenty twenty-five. So that's good. We're going to have um, a great affiliate driver in the team next year. That's what we like to see. Let's have a little look at. Um, the damage on Schumacher's car. So chassis is broke, front wing is broke. Luckily, the powertrain's okay. 
That's where I was uh, definitely worried for our future. Um, but yes, very, very uh, excited to get on with the Austrian Grand Prix. Performance is looking good in the car. And maybe, just maybe, we can scrape a few more points out of the next few races. If you have enjoyed that, give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more F1 Manager videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.